Hi guys, so I'm going to read Detective Comics number 225. So this comic is the first appearance of Martian Manhunter in the second story. So I'm going to read both the Batman and Martian Manhunter stories. But in this issue, if I were Batman, it's your turn now, Bruce Wayne, to play the part of Batman. This is one time I can change into my costume openly without anybody suspecting I'm Batman. The Batman with Robin the Boy Wonder. Have you ever wondered what would it be like if you were Batman? If you were the leader of the dynamic duo who championed the law in Gotham City? <laughs> well, many people in the great city had had that dream, and for some of them it came true. Here's the strange story of the drama and danger that came into the lives of those who finally realized their daydream of If I Were Batman. I'm Batman now, and we've got to answer the bat signal quickly. A strange tap chapter in Batman's career begins in a Gotham City grand jury room. The grand jury has indicted John Laro for fraud. Arrest him at once. Yes, sir. And far away. You've been indicted, Laro, and you can't get away. Detectives are already downstairs. Think so? I've had an escape plan worked in out in the case that happened. First, I get into these work clothes. I had one of my men waiting in this electric lineman's inspection truck. In these clothes, I'll look like a lineman at work. Laro's clever, which is... Lar Laro's clever, which is why I wanted to watch him. Come on, Robin. Look, that man and Robin. After Crook's faking his lineman. Not so fast, Laro. I'll stop the truck. What a catch. Say, wouldn't it be swell to be Batman? Wouldn't it? If I were Batman, but I guess everyone dreams that. That's true. Everyone thinks of being Batman, and that gives me a great idea. And the inspiration of Martin Main. <coughs> <coughs> Gotham Gazette editor is to be a fateful one for Batman and Robin. Soon in Police Commissioner Gordon's office, Lara will get a fast trial. And your catching him cleans up all urgent business right now. That's good. I promise to address the criminologist convention in Pacific City, so I'll be away for a few days. Mr. Main of the Gotham Gazette to see you. Commissioner, your department is seeking contributions to the Police Widows and Orphans Fund. Batman could help a lot while he's away. I'd be glad to, but how? I want to run a daily contest. Those who collect the most money for the fund can have their greatest wish fulfilled, to be Batman for a day. It'll help the fund, all right. But what about the Batcave and the possible dangers to the winners? We can fix up a temporary imitation Batcave, and Robin can be on hand to take charge of the winners and keep them out of trouble. If the winners agreed to follow Robin's orders and keep out of any real danger, it might be all right. What about it, Robin? I can try. We'll give you all the help you need, Robin. And remember, it's for the fund. And to think the thrill of the winners will get out of being Batman. Why, it might change their whole lives. Yes, Commissioner Gordon, many lives will be changed by this contest, including yours. For instance, the next day, With only imitation Batman to deal with, we can get away with it, and Lara will pay us a fortune. And the plan he worked out can't fail. It'll give this town the surprise of their lives. Gee, Bruce, I wish you didn't have to go to that convention as Batman. I don't like the idea of guarding those contest winners. But it's a good cause. And on now, I'm, I better change to Batman and be on my way. Later, Robin begins his duties. This underground parking garage we borrowed makes a good temporary bat cave. And here are the Batman costumes in various sizes. You thought of everything, but isn't it time now for the first contest winner to be named? And the first winner is one Jasper Snively, a timid bookkeeper with big dreams. I'll wear the bat costume with honor, you'll see. I'm sure, I'm sure you will, Mr. Snively. Oh, brother. Anyway, he looks as mild as a mouse. I won't have any trouble with him. But trouble is brewing, not far away. That advertising balloon is filled with hydrogen gas. Don't you know that you're endangering the whole neighborhood? I never thought. 
Of course, hydrogen gas is highly explosive. I'll have it removed at once. As the mooring lines are loosened, a sudden gust of wind. The balloon is free! Call the police! Get help! And help means the bat signal. That red light means Batman is needed. And since I'm Batman now, we must answer. Sure, Mr. Smively. Er, Batman. But don't forget, you have to do as I tell you. Let's get to the bat plane. The police radio said the balloon was drifting eastward. We ought to be getting near it. I think I see it. No, it's just a cloud. Yes, there it is. Robin, there it is. All right, Smith or Batman. See if you can hook those mooring lines with our grapple. I daren't go closer for the bat plane's jets. I kindle the balloon's gas. Oh, dear. I hooked the balloon instead of the lines. That's bad. If the grapple hook tore by the balloon, it may fall partly inflated and start a fire. Smively, what are you doing? Batman, Batman wouldn't hesitate. Neither will I. I'll free that grapple. And the Batman for a day makes a dramatic slide to the rescue. My weight pulled the grapple loose, but the fabric's torn and the gas is leaking. What would the real Batman do? And I thought Smively was timid. From a mouse he turned into a lion. Can't let anything happen to him. Gotta act fast. Sss. Can't stop this leak, but I can control it to, to, to keep the balloon from falling too fast, as Batman would. By changing from jets to helicopter blades, I can create an updraft that'll help keep the balloon up. And maybe, thanks to Smively, I can drift it right out to the sea. Soon with the balloon brought uh, harmlessly out to sea, Mr. Smively, you were splendid. But boy, I'm glad you're through with Batman. I told you I would wear this costume with honor. And now my life's dream is realized. I'm content to be plain Jasper Smively, bookkeeper. Later in Commissioner Gordon's office, Robin pours out his woes. I'll be glad when the real Batman gets back. This is too nerve-wracking. It's piling up money for the fun, though. In the meantime, Robin, I'd like you to keep your eyes and ears open. I think Laro's up to something. He hasn't hired a lawyer or prepared any defense. He seems far too confident, as though he's sure of freedom. That could mean he's planning a jailbreak, but that would have to be a big operation. I'll see what I can find out, if these contestants don't exhaust me. The next Batman for a day is no help at all. Here's today's winner, the film star Rodney Random. His studio contributed heavily to the fund, and I bet there's a publicity stunt connected to it somehow. Where do I change? Soon. Soon. Hmm, yes. I think that will do. <coughs> it should. <coughs> it should. He be, he's been primping for an hour, and he even brought his own mirrors and makeup kit. He's a ham, all right. I don't know why they don't wear, like, the full... I guess, I guess it would reveal Batman's identity. But, I mean... They don't, like, wear the full mask. It doesn't really make any sense. Like, they don't wear the... Like, the thing with the eyes on it. But that later that night... I want to patrol the city like Batman. And you needn't look out for me, Robin. I'm used to dangerous stunts. Just the same. Don't take any chances. Look over in that building. Flames! Seconds later, stand back, Robin. As Batman, I'll see if there's anyone inside to rescue. Wait, random. He's sure of himself. And why did he pick this part of town to patrol? Mm, I think I know. There's nobody in here, but I'll put out the fire, Robin. Just as I thought. Even before you came in, you notified your photographer to be here to see you put out this fire. Well, yes, I knew it wouldn't spread. But look! The wind carried sparks to the paint factory roof. Now it's on fire. But, but I didn't expect this. What do I do now? You stay out of back out of danger. I'll take care of it, if I can. No, it's all my fault. Tell me what to do, Robin, and I'll do it. Working with feverish activity on the smoldering roof. Is this the way you want it, Robin? Yes, and if we can just get enough leverage with this flagpole we took out of its socket... We can tip the water tank and did it. Woo, thanks, Random. You were a big help after all. I'll pay for all the damage, of course. And believe me, I'm cured of publicity hunting. Later, as the weary Robin returns alone to the real Batcave, I should be trying to find out what Laro's up to. 
but I don't have time with these contestants. Got to get some sleep so I'll be ready for the next one. And I wonder who that will be. Robin, you'll be surprised. It's someone you know. Someone who also has a secret dream. Why not admit it to myself? I always wished I could be like him. Free to go into action, not tied to a desk. I brought in big contributions to the fund. If I claimed credit for them, I could be Batman for a day. Why not? I might even run this Laro business myself. Yes, I will be Batman. And oh, the next, so the next day, I surely don't have to introduce today's winner to you. Up, oh, Commissioner Gordon. Let's get started. I can hardly wait. After a quick change in the temporary Bat Cave, a new Batman strides upon the scene. Batman and I inspected the new city prison when it was built, but it's practically escape proof. I know, but hmm, that man coming out of is Laro's clerk. His only visitor, and probably his go-between. Let's follow him. Mustn't hurt, hurt Gordon's feelings, but he seems a bit old for our kind of action. We don't need the ropes. There's a ladder. I always wanted to swing around like Batman, but maybe you're right. Scaling a few more rooftops. There they are. The drubber company charged us an, us an awful price. Hold it. I want to question you. And hey, Robin, how's this for good Batman action? Pretty good, huh? Uh, look, there's an, it's an old man Batman now. <laughs> Let's show him. Old oh, man, am I? Maybe so, but I was learning how to handle you characters like characters like you 20 years ago. Oh, lay off. Let's get out of here. We shouldn't have tackled them. They forgot I was a policeman before I became commissioner. I d didn't do or say anything. You know you can't force me to answer questions. No, I can't hold them now. But there's always tomorrow. Well, Robin, ugh, I guess it's time I got back to my desk. Being Batman is a thrill, but I've had ugh, enough. I gotta get Batman home at once to help track down this Laro thing before it's too late. The telegram should do it. This telegram should do it. Now that his main speech out there has been made. Hours later, after a fast trip homeward, Batman and Robin hold a tense conference. There's little time left to find out Laro's scheme. If only you could work with me. But another contest winner will be Batman tomorrow. We can't call off the contest. That wouldn't be fair. There's only one way I could be Batman. Tomorrow. This is my idea. As soon, and soon after a change of costume, Playboy Bruce Wayne starts calling on his friends. Yes, I'm getting contributions to the police fund. A worthy cause. I've given $10,000 myself. You're not fooling us, Bruce. You're trying to win that Batman for a day contest. Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne playing as Batman. That's rich, but it's a good cause, and I'll contribute. So will I. And the last day's winner <coughs> of the Batman for a Day contest is Bruce Wayne. This well-known young socialite wins the last day of the contest. Just a rich young thrill hunter playing as Bat being Batman now. What a laugh. It's a strange fate that casts Batman as an imitation of himself in an imitation Batcave. How does it feel to be Batman, Wayne? Why, it's ripping, really. More fun than playing polo. Ironic that I'm letting myself be photographed changing costume, and yet nobody suspects. But plenty of people will suspect, if I play Batman too well, so I'll have to be a different Batman today. I understand. I sent for Alfred, your butler, and he should be here any moment. And when the bat signal summons Batman, to or West Street, Alfred. It seems that there's a spot of trouble there. Right, sir. Ah, a millionaire Batman for a day as a chauffeur to drive him. I say, Robin, this rope is confounded hard to climb. Isn't there an elevator? Don't climb. I'll rescue this cat maroon on the ledge. Ah, I got him. The Batman is really something. But later, it's a grim Batman who prepares for action. Now that we've convinced all Gotham City, Bruce Wayne is a dub as Batman, we can follow that lead of yours. The only drubber company is an industrial equipment company on the south side. It's not far from here. But a visit to the firm only deepens the mystery. We lease heavy construction and excavating machinery to many people, but I remember none 
like those you describe. This is all very boring, Robin. I thought that being Batman would a bit be a bit more sporting than this. But once out of sight, I don't get it. That kind of equipment wouldn't help them slip Laro out of prison. Maybe it could, Robin. Laro's pulled the wool over all our eyes. And now we've got to move fast. Fast, faster, Alfred. Right to the city prison. I've got to keep up the Bruce Wayne act. Look, it's that rich young Wayne who's Batman today. And a few hundred feet from the prison. Batman, your deduction was right. This is a fake skyscraper excavation, see? They really tunneled toward the prison. Laro is in the lowest cell block, so all we gotta do is break up through the into the prison and snatch him out. And with him paying us a fortune, as well as the expenses for this fake excavation, it's easy money. But say, what's that shovel coming in here for? It's Robin and that phony young millionaire Batman. The kid's on to us. I say, Robin, that chap's got a firearm. Deuce. Deuce done sporting of him. I'd stop him as Batman would. Oop. Oops, I leaped just like Batman. But didn't hit him right. That takes care of him. Don't try any more Batman stunts, Mr. Wayne. I'll get them with the shovel. Later, with the escape foiled. It's humiliating. That phony Batman helping round us up. I didn't do half as bad as Batman, didn't, did I? The real Batman will be back tomorrow, so take off that costume, Bruce. You're a nice young chap, but as Batman, you're just hopelessly miscast. So that was a really weird story, but... Uh, introducing Don Jones, Martian Man, the Manhunter from Mars. So Martian Manhunter was a superhero. He's one of the founding members of the Justice League later on. So you've seen all sorts of detectives in action. FBI agents, private eyes, treasury men. But here, for the first time anywhere, is the most unusual of them all. A sleuth from out of this world. Yes, straight from Mars comes a man who patrols the streets of Earth on a quest to wage war against crime, a man brought here by the strange experiment of Dr. Erdell. But how do you know the sus suspect has a scar on his wrist and a laundry mark on his clothes that gives him away? You've never seen him before, and you've only been on the Force 24 hours. It's just that I know. I can tell you no more. In up his observation lab, Doc Professor Mark Erdell, world-famous scientist, works over a strange humming contraption dotted with twinkling lights. At last, I've built the robot brain of the century. With this invention, I can explore the cosmos, probe other dimensions. Now to test it. I wonder, really wonder, what frontier this robot brain will reach when I push, push this button. Here goes. Instantly, the room is thrown into a fantastic color drama or colorama of brilliant dancing lights. Bzz, bzz, click, click. There, it is an operation. This is a historic moment. Will my, the robot brain reach into space, time, or the fourth dimension? For long moments, the robot brain cackles and buzzes. There is a vivid flash and a strange, awesome figure. The robot brain. Look what it brought, an alien being. I read your mind well, Earthman. And I understand your ever wor thought and word. What have I wrought? What has this brain done? Who are you? Where are you from? I am from the fourth planet of the sun. I am a scientist on my world, and I am known as John Johns. Now, ex you explain how I came here. You are on the planet, Earth, transported here by this robot brain. I understand. Now, if you don't mind, return me to my world. I am sorry. To do that, I must change the thinking plot of the brain. It may take weeks, months, even years. You meant no harm, I realize that. But I must adapt myself to this planet until I can return to mine, so that my appearance won't frighten others. That is easily done. In the next few moments, an incredible metamorphosis takes place. You changed right in front of my eyes on Earth. Such a thing is impossible. But on my planet, every inhabitant has such chameleon-like powers. Now I am like any other person on Earth. Abruptly, you seem ill. What is wrong? My heart. 
It's been weak for years. All of this has been a shock. Too much a shock. A moment afterwards, if I could only reach the eczema serum in my lab, it could save your heart. Hurry, send me back. Sorry, John Johns. As I said, it would take time to reverse the thinking plot of the brain, so I could send you back. I fear I do not have that time. I am really sorry, John Johns. I am dying. I am the only man on Earth who can operate the robot brain. I have made a prisoner of you here on Earth. Farewell. Forgive me. And I am helpless. Your scientist is truly dead. Truly, as he said, I am prisoner here on Earth, unable to return to my own world. Up there, millions of miles away, my people are working on Project Star Ride. They experiment with a rocket ship that will carry them to other worlds. Until that day, the day they reach Earth, I am bound to stay here, disguised as an Earthman. How many years will it take? How many centuries? Until that day, the day of my release from Earth, I am doomed to just be another Earthman. But meanwhile, I shall explore my new planet home. There, I look enough like an Earthman. As for my name, well, John Johns could easily be John Jones. Good enough. Now to begin my adventures. First, the visitor from space goes to a seashore where gold, the greatest barding material on Earth, by my concentration of mind over matter, I am able to extract gold particles from Earthian seas. Thus, this should mu much should suffice for now. Then, in the days which follow, an exploratory trip around the world. Unlike on Mars, so many of the denizens here live in a small area that they build their structures into their the skies. The Arch of Triumph, a mo monument to victory in war. Mars saw its last war a thousand years ago. Look at their ancient wheeled vehicles, hundreds of them, crawling along the same streets where people walk. And another century or two, this will all be changed. A car bears down on the Martian. I forgot. I've been walking around in my extraterrestrial form. It's about time I let people see me. There. I'm visible again. Earth is far behind Mars in many ways. But that is natural, since it is a younger planet. But this is evil they have called crime. So this is in the newspaper. Detectives search for gangsters. Once Mars once had crime, centuries ago, until the great evolution, we had wicked men who preyed on the good, but our enlightened science made all crime obsolete. There seems to be much crime here, so perhaps while I am stranded on Earth, I can help, help the Earthians by fighting this crime. Yes, I think I shall do that. Spotting a police precinct sign, John Jones of Mars enters and... So you want to be a detective, eh? You and who else? All right, Buster, I'll set you up with Lieutenant Saunders. He's in charge of the detec detectives. Fire, the enemy of all Martians. I can do many things that Earthmen can't do, but I am vulnerable to flame. It is my one weakness. Much later, in the office of the chief of detectives, All right, Mr. John Jones, you're qualified to become a detective. You'll be on the force tomorrow. More fire. I must remember always to stay away from it. I got a very interesting case for him to go on right away. I'm wondering just how this rookie will make out. It says, don't miss the next issue of Detective Comics for the first case tackled by the Manhunter for Mars, the case of the Magic Baseball. The end. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys later.